What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So of course I had to come through. First of all, let me tell you guys, I haven't done a video in exactly, um, I haven't recorded a video in like days, probably like a week since last Real Talk. So last Real Talk, I recorded a video on a Monday. Make sure the mic is on. Um, and I haven't recorded since then. Um, just because I just... Not that I haven't been in the mood, but I've had so many things to do. Um, and I figured I have recorded enough videos in like a time span where I could just kind of like not record a video or two for a week. And normally I do this on Saturdays. I'll try to get like a lot of work done. Never Sundays, but mainly Saturdays. I'll record probably like six, seven wig videos, you know what I'm saying? Or six, seven videos in general, not just wigs. But I mean, I do it this past weekend. I spent my weekend um, freaking dyeing hair dyeing bundles and making them colorful to for them to come out like shit okay like pure d shit when i say shit like okay i had this whole vision okay i had this whole motherfucking vision of this platinum blonde hair with a little bit of dark roots that i was going to do and like peach colored highlights this is my vision now mind you i had already bought that l'oreal i think it's l'oreal that makes it l'oreal peach high dye hair dye because they have their own shit and I was like I don't really know because it doesn't look like it's really gonna work out you know I'm gonna go to the beauty supply store like Sally's and I'm gonna get some real good shit so I get the Eon color brights and it says the color is salmon and the color of the box is motherfucking peach I was like this is perfect because this is the color that I want the highlights in the hair to be okay Please tell me why this motherfucking hair turned out to be this bright ass, shocking fucking pink. It looks horrible. It looks motherfucking horrible. So now I have to strip the color out of the wig. Like, I didn't even make the wig yet, but I have to strip it, strip it out of the bundles. It looks like Halloween hair. It's like that pink hair. You ever go to the Dollar Tree and they got those little freaking um, headbands that's made of synthetic hair? They got a pink, they got a green, they got a brown, they got a yellow and an orange one. Well, if you've seen that, you know what I'm talking about then. You know what color pink I'm fucking talking about. Horrible. Salmon don't even look like that. The color of the box was peach. Okay? Peach colored. And that was the color the hair was supposed to be. I didn't even turn out like that. I was just so disappointed. So disappointed. Okay. Very disappointed. Beyond disappointed. I'm like, just great. Now I got to spend more time. And, and let me tell you, this is not like something you could do really quick. It takes you a time if you want to get it precise and perfect. Let me tell y'all bitches. Now I got to turn around and strip the color out of the hair using some vitamin C pills and shit. So I'm probably going to end up doing a video showing how you can take the color out because I've already done this before. But the whole point is I really don't like to waste my fucking weekends doing that. Meaning I'm, I I did this Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Anyway, that was my whole week, my whole weekend. So I haven't had to do any videos. So I haven't been wearing makeup until today. And that's only because I figured today a bitch will do a couple of wig videos and that's about it. Okay. And then I will carry on with my merry fucking way. Plus, you know, I got up and I took my old lashes off and put on these new ones that I got from some, um, some hair supplier that sent me some bundles and this hair, these lashes are everything, baby. These little strips, these are really, really cute. You guys know I wear individuals and strips at the same time. Like these will last me for like two goddamn weeks. Okay. Like, they look good, though. They look really, really good. Like, I'm feeling these. Like, seriously. Can you, do I need to, like, let me, like, zoom up some so you guys can see. Hold on. Let me focus this a little bit. Do y'all bitches see that? Should I, like, zoom in some? Okay, look. I'm saying. Now, I never have gotten any nice eyelashes like this from any Chinese hair vendor that sent me any lashes before. You know, they always give you those little fucking fake ass plastic ones. Like, what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this shit? I mean, if they was more like hair fibers. I'm... Anyway, when I seen these, honey, I was like, oh shit. These I will keep. 
And these is really, really cute. I like them. They like really, really cute. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, my, didn't want to zoom in too much for you guys. So that's what I have been doing. Okay. That is my, that is what I've been doing today. Okay. But other than that, um, ain't really been nothing been popping. I know a lot of people ask me when I'm going to do a Dollar Tree video with my daughter Mumsy. So I will be getting that done. Hopefully this week. Like, listen, I'm not really trying to spend no money like that. I know I do need things from the Dollar Tree, but I expect, you know, like the shit that I'm buying from the Dollar Tree is really not that exciting for y'all. Like y'all don't really care about no fucking bleach, no fucking, um, Ziploc baggies, and shit like that. Like I, and honestly, I really don't see. I have not seen enough nice things at the Dollar Tree t to be like making a video about. Meaning, like I'm not really trying to spend my money. Like I see a lot of people do Dollar Tree videos, and that's great. But I just, I'm not one of those people that want to buy just anything from the Dollar Tree because it's a dollar. Because that shit adds the fuck up, and then you'd be like, why did I buy? I just spent sixty dollars at the Dollar Tree, and I have been there. So I'm really trying to like get my teeth done. You know, on the sixth of March, I go back in and I get my teeth shaved down and then I get some new teeth put in. Listen, a bitch is trying to look fly. I've been losing weight. Um, and then you know what? I'm not I'm you know, I've been trying to do new exercises and I just feel like I've been a little bit discouraged this morning because I felt like I went and looked at my ass in the mirror and I was like, well, it's not I'm like touching it, you know, I'm like, okay, girl, lifting my butt cheeks up and I'm like well, it's not up high. It's not up high. I wanted to sit up higher. You know what I mean? And it's not where I want it to be. Granted, it does take time. Okay, it does. I've been using the weights, like you guys suggested, like work out with some weights. And I tried that, you know what I'm saying? But, and then I tried some different exercises with, with these girls with these big old booties. And I know, like, the, I know this, their asses. I know this. It has to be. Like, it has to be their butts. I don't know, but I just wanted, I want to, like, make my butt sit up a little bit higher and, like, more rounded, you know? And, I'm just trying so hard. And like today, this morning, I got so discouraged and I almost gave up on a little bit of workout I did this morning. And like, you know, you ever have those moments when you just like really, really discouraged and it's just like, you know what, I feel like giving up, but then you don't want to feel like a failure. Like I really don't want to feel like a failure. And I know me that sometimes I can get very unmotivated and just be like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to just sit this one out today. And then I make up an excuse of why I done fucking sat it out today, then tomorrow, then the next day. And then I go back to like doing what I normally do, which is like not working out and not exercising. You know what I'm saying? So I felt really discouraged this morning when I was working out. So normally what I do is I work out first in the house, probably like a 20 minute workout. It's nothing, nothing drastic. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's motherfucking gal pal who works the fuck out with him. Or maybe we shouldn't even use his old ass, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Um, but I just want to look like, you know what I'm saying? I want to look like something, okay? So I just was really discouraged about that this morning, and especially because, like, the TV show wasn't working that I wanted to watch. And, you know, so I did what I did, and I didn't do my entire workout. I'm just be honest with you guys and say, I didn't do the entire butt, lip, ass, make your ass bigger workout. I didn't do all of it, okay? I said, you know what, April? Let's just go. Go on your walk with Sugar because that's what you do. Okay, we walk two miles. So, Sugar, you know, she's Sugar's a little bit overweight now, in case you guys are wondering about her, my dog. Um, she's a little bit overweight and um and she walks a little bit slow because she's not new, she's old. So we walk in and um we get to like the longest walk path and normally the sprinklers are off by this time. You know what I'm saying? It's like nine o'clock. It's after nine. And, and, and also it just pissed me off because I was out there late. Normally I'm not out there that time. I'm already in the house. So, you know, like I said, normally the sprinklers are out during this time and we probably don't already got like, I want to say a half of a mile. Can you please tell me we're walking on this long path? This is um, there's like a bunch of them, but they're separated by the street. You gotta walk over to the next block. You know what I'm saying? Where I live at, it's not like a street where you can just drive through. It, like it's not public street, okay? So anyway, I get halfway on this long path, and I see all the motherfucking sprinkler systems on. Why the fuck are they on at full blast? And they don't even have them turning around. So normally what I could do is I could just run through it or walk really fast with sugar, okay? And she's the one that's getting wet, but I'm like, you know, 
No, they had them all going in towards the sidewalk or over to the other side of the sidewalk. Like, are you serious right now? There are about eight of them bitches, okay? Eight of them motherfucking bitches, like spread out nicely, but not spread out nicely to where it's like, bitch, you about to get soaked. It's motherfucking 50 degrees out this bitch this morning, okay? And it's cold. It's chilly, all okay? right? I know some people are like, that's Arizona. It, don't get, it gets motherfucking cold, okay? Trust and believe I was the same person who was like, these motherfuckers is wearing bubble coats and fucking wool hats and fucking wool coats and fucking winter time and i'm out here with tank top on now this is the first year or two when i first moved here now second year or two is bitches like i don't think so i'm gonna put on a sweat hoodie i don't put on no bubble coats or no fucking wool scullies but i put on a little lightweight hoodie zip up hoodie okay so and i got some gloves because my fucking hands get cold in the morning and i made sure to get the gloves where i can look at my phone with you know touch the screen but anyway i'm like nah i can't even if it, if it was just april by herself I would have ran through that motherfucker like it was nothing, okay? Maybe like it was something, not nothing. Because if I was running through something, if I was running through water like it was nothing, that mean a bitch was back on the track team in high school. But, nah, that's not even a, we're not even gonna go there. I would have just ran through that shit like I had some sense, okay? Basically, like, you know, I, I would have probably, like, jogged through that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a two-step, like a jog. Not fucking ran, like, pew, none of that shit. I would have just kind of, like, ran, jogged, like, you know, little pep in my step. But with sugar, I'm standing there at the fucking beginning of it, and I'm like, and I'm looking down at the dog, and I'm like, Sugar, we got to get through this. And I'm like, shit, I can't carry you. You too motherfucking heavy. And you damn sure ain't going to run. And I'm standing there and I'm trying to figure it out. Because any other time when I see it like that, they're turning. And they're all turning at a certain time. So I can always get through. And by the time I get through, I ain't got wet. You know, it's like a mind thing. You got to fucking control that shit. You got to figure it out. It's like a puzzle. I figured that shit the fuck out. And if I was with my old dog, Coco, who, God bless his heart, his soul, he passed away. That little motherfucker would run, okay? He was older than Coco, but he would be out, Pew! leaving me behind. Be like, wait up, Coco. Wait the fuck up. He all the way down the street. But with her, it's like, bitch, you about to get soaking wet and catch pneumonia out this motherfucker if you run through, if you go through this water with her. You bet, just, bitch, turn the fuck around. That's what I had to do. I had to turn the fuck around and walk back home. And by that time, or I could have just walked on the next block to get around. But I was like, by that time, I was so discouraged already. I was over discouraged. And then I got sugar. She behind me, like, like she out of breath from walking. You, I'm not even walking fast. She be fucking up my walk all the time. And if I don't take her, she catch an attitude, like, you know, crying, <laughs> pouting, like, <laughs> Like, you know, I got a dog, a mini poodle, who is controlling what the fuck I do to go outside and walk and exercise. Like, I got to take you because if I don't take you, you're catching an attitude and you're whining to me and you're fussing at me and you're pouting to me. This is what she does. So I have to take her. And I'm like, well, maybe this would be good for you. You'll lose some weight eventually. But no, she doesn't lose any weight. So, yeah, that was discouraging to me that I fucking couldn't continue on with the walk. And this the whole the whole fucking exercise today. So I'm hoping that tomorrow when I wake up that I'm in like a really good place and I feel like a lot better because I don't want to be discouraged. However, I don't want to be like over fucking worked. Like I have to give myself sometimes a pep talk like April bitch. You want to look like I don't even want to look like that bitch. But April, you want your booty to look good? Bitch. Get it popping. Okay, if you want to lose your stomach fat, April, get it popping. So I have to give myself these little pep talks a lot of the time. And like today, the other April was like, bitch, we're not going to pep talk you today. We want to stay here. But I wasn't trying to allow myself to stay here because I already felt like I didn't work out Saturday or Sunday. Normally, it'll be on a Sunday. And it's Tuesday. And yesterday, I got up and did exercises, but I didn't go for a walk. So it's like, okay, April, get your funky ass outside. <laughs> so other than that, like my weight is fluctuating. Like one minute I'll be 192. Then the next minute I was 191. Now the next day I'm 194. So I'm like not really getting that. And it's starting to really, 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 really irritate me. Okay. Losing weight is so hard. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that feels that way. But putting it on is like the easiest fucking thing in the world. Like, I wanted the sandwich so bad yesterday that I made the sandwich, a turkey and cheese and ham sandwich. And I knew that by the time I woke up this morning, it would be 194 just because I wanted that motherfucking sandwich. 
it's great to eat healthy, but after a while, sometimes it gets to be a lot on a person. It takes a toll on you. Like, shit, I've ate healthy all fucking day, all week. Can I just have a sandwich? So, you know, I, I kind of get, I kind of get discouraged about that. Like, yeah. But other than that, you know, it is what it is. Um, nothing new in my life besides that. And um, not that I can think of. My son, Wuzzle, um, you know, he's got his job now. Um, he's been working there probably like two weeks at Walmart. He works night shift. And he likes it. That's great. I can't wait for him to get his discount card, okay? Because the bitch do like Wally World. Um, other than that, that's about it. So we're going to get into this because I do have like two videos to do. Maybe three. Who knows? And plus, I want to do, um, I want to make sure to call my husband back in a little bit because, you know, I just like to call him. We call each other. But anyway, if you have a Real Talk video that you would like me to talk about, then you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk. And if you would like to change the names of the characters, the people in your email, you can always let me know, hey, April, I went ahead and changed the names. If you don't do that, I'm going to assume that you did change them, or I may assume that you didn't. Either way, you can go ahead and send me an email. And other than that, let's get it popping, okay? All right, you guys. So, hey, April. I love watching your videos. I need a little bit of advice and guidance, and I would be very forever grateful for some help. This is a long one. I hope you can understand. My name is... See what I'm saying? Uh, my name is Atrina, and I am 24 years old. This past year, my world has fallen apart, but I will start from the beginning when this all started. Six years ago, my parents divorced, and my mother moved a state away with my 10-year-old sister with some friends of hers that she met online. My sister has some depression and some suicide attempts. At this point, I talk to my mom on a daily basis. I didn't speak to my father. So from what she told me at that time, I thought that she had a handle on it and was getting her help, my sister. I never thought to question my mother. One year after their divorce, I started talking to my father on a regular basis, but I never told my mom because it was a very bad divorce. She took everything from him. I mean everything. His daughter, his belongings, his vehicle. He lost the house because she took all of his savings. In 2013, my dad had three open heart surgeries in a two-month period, along with lung surgery. But I never went to see him at this time. I regret it today still. But he healed, and I then made it my mission to have him in my life and me be in his life. I'm the only daughter that talks to him. My dad would write letters, send gifts, and call my little sister for years, but always got hung up on and ignored. At this point, it was just hard, you know? I was angry all the time about my mom and her life choices and how she could do this to a man she was married to for over 20 years, someone she had children with. In early 2016, my dad moved down the street from me and my fiance, and then my dad got court papers in the mail concerning my little sister. She had missed school so much that the school had reported it as a truancy. It also said that my mother had been letting my sister use marijuana instead of her antidepressants. And they were using it together. My sister was 15. I showed up with my father to his court date. He can't travel a state away alone due to his health. I tried to go into the courtroom with him, but my little sister requested that I leave. So I did. I waited in my car until they came out of the courthouse and wanted to talk to my mother, calmly approached my mother, and my sister got so upset and pushed me and screamed in my face that she hates me because I associated and have a relationship with my father, which is also her father. Then she spit in my face. My mom just stood there and watched. I just went back to my car, didn't even make it, and just fell on the ground crying. My dad then had to see me so upset. My mother never talked to me the same after this, and only if I called her would we speak. My sister hates me literally, so she never talks to me as well. Now, there have been many court dates, but they have all been for the same issue, but the system never does anything. 
Today, there was a court date and my sister got removed from my mother's home for 10 days for evaluation into foster care. She is considered a habitual truant. My mom still doesn't talk to me and neither does my sister. I don't trust either of them. With how much anger they have, <clears throat> with, how much, with how much anger they have and how much they hate me, I just don't trust them. It feels like in my mom's eyes, I'm trash. I've been thrown away. I don't know what to do, what to tell my dad, what to feel. I just cry every night and pray to God that my dad doesn't see my pain because I don't need to hurt him more than they have. I watch his heartbreak every day. I don't know what to do for him or my fiance and myself. My fiance has seen me just fall apart and shatter. I've considered completely relocating and starting fresh, just the three of us. But I just need some advice, some real advice from you. Thank you. This is so sad for Trina. I, I feel so bad for her because she's 24 years old and her sister is 15. And, you know, her mom and her dad divorced when five years ago because her sister was 10 at the time. And, you know, her mom took everything from the man, the house, the cars, the job, the bank account, the little girl. She moved from, from another to another state. And that really sucks. You know, I can understand how, you know, Trina might feel like, you know, that's like part of your family. Um... Divorce is a hard thing. Some some families take it really like bad and some don't. But, you know, and some it doesn't affect some kids and some it does. You know, it, it just depends on the family strength and, you know, also with the parents too. Um, what I do think though is that, you know, it kind of sucks for Trina because her mom is has, not is, has basically turned the little girl, the 15-year-old against her mom, her, her sister and her father. You know what I'm saying? So Trina's mom has turned we're going to call her Carol. We're going to call the 15-year-old Carol. Trina's mom has turned Carol, the little sister, against the father, which is her own father, which is Trina and Carol's father, and against Trina, her own sister, which sucks. There's no upbringing. There's no home training. So you got your 15-year-old daughter and you smoking weed for what? Because she's a depressed teen and you feel like this will make her feel feel better and this will improve shit for her. This is going to make her worse, okay? What sucks is the fact that, okay, I know a lot of kids take divorce hard. You know what I mean? Some may go through a phase in life, but we also have to not allow the child to control us. Like, I understand everybody's kids is different, but this is my thing. If you allow them to just get into this, this mood where they're depressed and you're feeling pity for them and you're all oh, don't do this and all that's them controlling you <clears throat> like it's understandable like in the beginning that kids go through some shit but there comes a time and a place with everybody you gotta get up and you gotta get over the shit depression a lot of people go through depression and i've went through depression but as long as you allow it to consume you it's going to consume you and it's not going to make any as long as you allow it to consume you it will consume you and it will make your life a living hell and then you'll be stuck in the middle of nowhere meaning in the middle of nowhere not like in the actual place but you'll be stuck and you won't know what to do sometimes with yourself you just like stuck and you didn't miss out on all of this improvements and you done could have did this and you could have done that. And it's just like, I've been depressed for all this time and I don't even know what to do. I'm like stuck in the middle of nowhere. And it sucks because, all right, I understand a little girl, she was upset. You know, Carol was upset because, you know, her mom and her dad divorced. She's 10 years old. She probably needs to both her parents. Okay, I get that. And you moved away. You took her. You moved her away from her mom. Her, excuse me, from her father and her sister. Okay, I get that too. But then you probably, as a parent, I bet you Trina's mom felt guilty and let this little girl run shit and control her life. And I say this because if she didn't, then the little girl wouldn't have been telling her older sister, I don't want you to come in the courtroom or also screaming in her face and spitting in her face. Spitting in anyone's face is the worst thing you could ever do. I would rather you slap me than spit in my face. Because if you spit in my face, I probably am going to end up in jail because I'm probably going to fucking strangle you to death. Okay? So spitting is horrible. And for the mother to just stand there and watch this and not say anything or do anything shows me that Trina's mom 
has allowed this 15 year old girl to control her because she is upset about the fact that her parents have been divorced and Trina's mom feels guilty. So she allows her to do what she wants, probably to feel like she's got that motherly love and she's got a control over the situation when she doesn't. Now you got this 15 year old little girl who is smoking weed with you and not going to school. The next thing I guarantee, I don't ever like to put anything bad on someone. Why somebody always, okay, this is the bullshit that I'm talking about. I don't know Lisa calling regarding my fucking credit card, but I would wish these fucking strange numbers would cost out calling me. So now, like I said, I don't really, I don't like to put anything bad on someone, but I guarantee you, if you're letting this little girl cut school so much, she's a truant, she's a habitual truant, and you got a smoking weed, how much you want to bet within like a year or maybe less, Carol's little ass is going to be pregnant, Okay. I'm just saying she going to drop out of school and then she's going to be like what next on welfare and having her mom take care of her. And then the, st the story is just going to go on and on and on. You know, I mean, like I said, I hate to put shit on people, bad shit, but it sucks that, you know, when divorce occurs, it, it affects people in so many different ways. And I get that sometimes we're better off not married to the person. Sometimes we aren't it either way. You know, the thing is with Trina, her dad has had open heart surgery. He's had lung surgery. He's now going through court with the mother and the daughter regarding the truancy. So, and the little girl has been put into foster care because she needs to be evaluated. It really sucks because the mother doesn't speak to Trina, nor does the little girl, and they don't want to have anything to do with the father. Like, what the fuck did he do that was that bad that you had to have the nerve and the audacity to turn his kid against him. Number one, me personally, I don't like go around kissing and sniffing nobody's ass. If you don't want to be bothered with me, then you know what? You just don't want to be fucking bothered with me. I'm not about to sit around here or come around anybody who doesn't want to be bothered with me. Little sister or not, okay? Or mother or not. Like, I get it. You're my family. I love you to death. I'm always going to love you. But I can't force you to love me and I damn sure can't force you to want to like me or even want to speak to me for that matter and sometimes you got to just leave shit the fuck alone you know what i'm saying it seems like the more you try to be in a person's life and they don't want to be bothered with you it's like they taunt you they taunt you meaning they don't they just taunt you they just like no and they, and they know it's hurting you and they just continue to do it they taunt you and it seems like they just are have this more barrier this wall up like the more harder the harder you try to be in their lives the higher the wall gets and that sucks but sometimes you know what as hard as it is even if it's family or your own children, sometimes you got to leave them the fuck alone and allow them to see their wrongs. Like you cannot keep telling somebody until you blew in the face. Listen, girl, you need to go to school. Listen, girl, you need to go to school. Listen, girl, you need to go to school. You can tell somebody that until they blew in the face. They're not going to want to do what they want, what you want them to do until they're ready to. Okay. And that's just, that's just facts, straight up facts. Like now you got this little girl who is a fucking wildcat, thanks to her mom. Thanks to the mom. And what will suck the most is, like, what if this little girl, Carol, is put into the father's care? Like, he gets custody of this little girl. His life, Trina's life, and Carol's life is going to be one big living hell because the father's not going to put up with that shit, nor is Trina. And the little girl is not going to want to be there. So now you've got this little girl who is a habitual truant that smokes weed and you already got her in foster care. They took her out of the household because them they feel like when your kid gets taken from you, that means that the parent has not is not doing a good job. The court system feels like the parent is not responsible enough to care for the child. So we are going to remove the child from the motherfucking house and give their, their child to someone who can care for them for the time being. So obviously Carol was removed from the home because they feel like Trina's mother is not worthy enough to take care of her. Had she been, then none of this shit would be popping off right now. So it sucks for the little 10-year-old, not 10-year-old, 15-year-old, because she just screwed up somewhat of her teen years, and she can always get back on track, but she's got this nasty little attitude where she thinks that it's okay to spit in people's faces. And, you know, you're good, Trina, because had that been my little sister, I'd have fucking, she probably wouldn't have had no teeth. I will fucking knock fire out of her ass. Like, seriously. And now, like you said, your dad is going through things and you don't want him seeing you depressed and you're sad about it and shit. Let me tell you something, Trina. 
Like I said, sometimes we just have to let go. And I know like in your heart, it hurts you so much because that's your mother and that's your sister. But they don't want to be bothered with you right now. And I know that probably hurts to hear me say that. But you know something? You got your father and you got your fiance. And them two right there, them two men are your backbone. Them two are what keep you together. And you don't need any negative vibes coming around you or your kids. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, you or your father. Your father, you know what I'm saying? He already got a condition. He's already going through something. And he don't need any more stress. He's already got stress going on with your mom and your little sister back and forth with him at court. That's enough. Okay? That's enough. And I'm not really understanding why they're even involving him in the matter because they live in a totally different state. And your mother took the kid and they're divorced. Some things are just left better alone. And it's unfortunate that your father has to go through this. He's sickly and he needs you guys' his help. And he's he's moved down the street from you. It's unfortunate that he has to go through this. And he's already had enough bad shit happen in his life. He's already had enough bad luck in his life. He's already had like shit taken from him. And, you know, if that were my father or my mom, whoever, I just wouldn't let them be. I just wouldn't let allow all of that to go down in their life. Like, I just wouldn't put up with it. Like my mom, she's not in the best of health. And, you know, I have to say things to my sister too, because listen, I don't want to, I don't want to hear mommy calling me up pissed off about anything. Like for real, don't have her calling me up being pissed up about shit. Like that's not cool. Second of all, these are the only parents you have. Your mom is disrespectful, straight up disrespectful. If she let your little sister spit in your face like that, she's straight up disrespectful. She done lost her motherfucking marbles, for real. Like, how you gonna sit up there and smoke weed with your 15-year-old? This is like what you call a real dysfunctional family. Like, seriously, not Trina and her dad, but her mom and her sister. That's some dysfunctional shit. If you sit up there smoking weed with your daughter and you know she's not going to school, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you done moved out of state to another state with some friends that you met online. Like, who the fuck does that? Okay, so you done moved with some friends online and to another state, and now you letting your daughter smoke weed and miss school. That says a lot about you as a person, okay? It's one thing to be divorced, but you are not making your daughter's life any fucking better. You know what I'm saying? Trina, like, I understand how you feel. Well, I, you know, meaning I've never been through this, but I can understand the heartache because we've all experienced some type of heartache before from a family member. So I totally understand that. But what I had to do is I had to just leave it alone. You know, I had to definitely just leave it alone. Sometimes when you leave shit alone later on in life, it'll come back to you. And that person has realized and grown up, has grown up and has realized what an asshole they have been. You know what I'm saying? You can't allow people to just constantly keep taking advantage of your kindness and um, also just being disrespectful to you. I get it. That's your mom, but she's not acting like one and she's definitely not treating you like a daughter. And your little sister, she's been fucking brainwashed by your mother. And I feel like she seriously has been, this little girl has been brainwashed because if she can sit there and say, oh, I don't like you. I hate you because you associate yourself with, with daddy. How dare you? You were 10 when they divorced. What do you even fucking know? You don't know. He never mistreated you. So what's the point of you disliking me and him? The mother has already brainwashed the little girl. If she let the little girl go off like that, she's already been brainwashed. That little girl is not lost, but she's semi-lost, and she's not going to come back down until she's ready to. There is nothing you can probably say to this little girl to make her see where you're coming from until she's ready to. And it sucks because she's so young, but it still is okay because she's still young. So, you know... You know, they say you can't, treat an, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. She's not an old dog. She's still young. You can still, and she can still have some values instilled in her. But sometimes, like for this, these kids of this generation, it's going to take, you know, like a hard knock on their ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're going to have to go through something to realize like, damn, I should have listened to this person. Because this generation now, these kids, they just think they know every fucking thing. Like I got a 15 year old. She doesn't act like that. But you know, I've got five kids and trust and believe me when I tell you that they do think they know everything. They think that they know more than me sometimes. And I have to put them in check, like, hold the fuck up now. I'm here because I'm here because I know more than you. 
Trust and believe. I ain't no motherfucking dummy. Just because you think you fucking made up some shit today, motherfucker, we've been doing that years ago, okay? You have to tell them. And sometimes, like I said, you got to leave them the fuck alone. For real. Like, you just got to leave them alone sometimes. I I, 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 I leave mine alone sometimes. Like, my oldest, my eldest son, who's in New York, I love him to death. But here's the thing with him. You're not going to keep calling me up asking me for money all the time. Like, you got a job. Your girlfriend got two motherfucking jobs. And you be making music. You're not going to keep calling me up asking me for a couple hundred dollars every month so you can do this. So, man, listen, I've already been there with you. I'm going to leave you the fuck alone because I don't have time for the shit. I, I don't have time for the shit. Like, I'm not about to let nobody irritate me. I'm not. Okay. I'm not going to let nobody irritate my soul. I'm not going to let no everybody irritate my motherfucking bank account. And I'm definitely not going to let my, nobody irritate my parents. Your father is sickly. And the one thing that I can tell you to do is to leave them the fuck alone. Your dad don't have to be bothered with none of that shit. Your mother dug this hole and now maybe she should fucking dig her way out of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't keep going back and forth to court uh, in another state for your dad, um, um, for his health like that, for your mom. And your, your, your dad's health is like in jeopardy. Don't do that. If you guys want to move to another state and start fresh, that's always a good thing to do too. You know what I'm saying? Everybody needs a fresh start in life. However, Trina, keep in mind that your dad has had multiple hearts, open heart surgeries and a lung surgery. So you don't want to take him somewhere just because you want a fresh start. If that's what you guys want to do, then I'm all for it. But please research where you're going first because your dad has a health condition and you need to make sure that wherever you take him at, it's beneficial to him and he's going to be able to see his doctors and still carry on and be able to do the things that he's been doing. And if it's not beneficial to him, then stay there and just don't fuck with them. You just got to walk away and leave them the fuck alone. When you leave people the fuck alone, they be like, oh, what the fuck? They ain't fucking worried about me. Oh, they not bothering me. Then they start coming the fuck around. Trust me when I tell you, little Carol, she going to come around. may not be today, tomorrow, next year, or when you want it to be. But that little bitch going to fucking figure it out sooner or later. Okay? And hopefully it's not too late for her, meaning she got a baby. And she got to figure shit the fuck out on her own because her mother is just fucking, like, on some dumb shit. You know what I mean? I don't know. But for me, I would just let it be, honey. Let it be. And just, you know... Care for your father. I know a lot of shit hurts sometimes, and we, and we as adults, it's hard to deal with, but I wouldn't let it consume me like that. Seriously, you just let it go. You got to let it go. That's your sister and you love her, but sometimes you just got to let it go. And, it'll make, and you know what? You'll feel better after you let it go. And then you'll start realizing, like, you know what? How the fuck was I sitting here crying about this shit? all right you guys so this one seems like a love story kind of like hello miss april i love watching your shows and seeing how you interact with your kids i wish i had a mother like that you have a sad face mm -hmm. thank you anyways i appreciate what you do and keeping it um and keep doing it girl with a 100 and a thumbs up now let's get to this real talk sorry it's long i met this guy we can call him geo he and me and him met at the art museum. We hit it off and started talking a lot, FaceTiming and texting. He's super sweet, funny, and smart and gives all the right advice. We went on a lot of dates, but that wasn't just average typical dates. It was dates like musical plays or theaters, the ice carnival because it's cold out here, sometimes below zero. Damn. All the business. He always treats me like a lady. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm 21 years old and he's 23. I even told my mom about him and she said he sounds like a sweetheart and would like to meet him. So on our last date, I mentioned that to him and said, and he was very excited. He even talked about a present to bring my mom and dad. But I said, no, just you being there is a gift enough. Well, on that date, my mom starts calling and blowing up my phone. I thought it was an emergency. So I answered right away. She started yelling at me through the phone. She was saying, you didn't say he was from Chicago. You know me and your dad do not like people from Chicago. I told her through the phone to please calm down and he's not like that. He's different. She screamed for me to come home immediately. Miss April, when I told you I hung up, I had tears coming down my face. I couldn't even speak. I told Gio that I have to go home and he said, okay. I knew he heard the conversation me and my mom had. He gave me my flowers and a beautiful letter before I went in my car to drive home. I walked in the house and my mother snatched the flowers and letter out of my hand. 
I tried to take them from her and she smacked me in the face. Miss April, I usually snap back, but for some reason, my heart was in a sunken place and I bawled into tears. My father is screaming at me saying how dumb I am for thinking of being with a guy like that and he never met him. I asked how did they know and I guess my older brother's friends is his friends with Gio and they told them. My mom screamed at me saying, you know, you are not, you are not good enough for him. Wait, what? My mom screamed at me saying, you know, you are not good enough for him. Why would she tell her daughter that you're not? Maybe she meant to say you are too good for him. I don't know. You're not. I don't know. You work long hours in school full time. You don't have time for a relationship and for a guy. He just wants to hit it and quit it. And that's it. Okay. They yelled at me, telling me not to see him again. Miss April. I am 21 years old, a full-time student, helping my mom pay rent, $400 and groceries, $100. The little money I have left over is the insurance for my car that I paid for, with none of their help and my phone bill. My older brother, that one that snitched on me, doesn't pay a dime because my mom said he's under stress. He dropped out of college and chose to work at McDonald's and buys clothes with all his money while my parents pays his phone bill. Miss April, I stressed so hard I didn't even have the money for my college books and Gio gave me $300 for them. I promised to pay him back on my next check. I tried to give it to him and he said no, he can never take it. I FaceTimed Gio that night and told him what had transpired. Can't see each other anymore and he had tears coming down his face. The next morning he drove 45 minutes from his home and placed a love letter on my window. He stated that if we can't see each other, he would write to me every day and I can just text him in response. I was so heartbroken, but I said, okay. One day my mom seen the letters he wrote me and threw them away. I hid them in a box in my closet out of sight and she found them. She Facebooked Gio and said to never speak to me or she or he would get hurt. Gio texted me, sending me the message and I told him, I'm so sorry. He said, maybe it's best to have space. So me and my mom can get along and I haven't heard from him since. Miss April, I'm so heartbroken. I don't know what to do. I want to move out, but I can't afford it. And I was hearing that they could cut my financial aid in half if I did. Please help me, Miss April. Thanks. Oh, thanks. We're going to call her Tiffany. Oh, she put, okay. I don't know if she wants her name to be Tiffany or this, but we're just going to call her Tiffany. And he is handsome, Tiff. Oh, my goodness. He's handsome. That's crazy. Okay. I don't... You Listen, I'm from New York. I don't really know what's wrong with Chicago men. There's a lot of men in out in Arizona that are from Chicago. A lot of people in general that are from Chicago. I, I don't know what the deal is with them. Like, because I don't talk to them. So, I don't really know. But that's that really sucks. Like, there has to be like, what the fuck is... Tiffany's parents issue with people from Chicago. Like, are they from Chicago? So they know how the people are from Chicago are, are from or how they act. Like, we need to know what the issue is with your parents in this Chicago thing. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. Like, people all over the world act one way and act, can act another way. You know, you can't just, like, look at a book and judge it by its cover, meaning the same thing because he's Chicago or from Chicago doesn't mean that he acts like the rest of the dudes from Chicago. Like that's not so. If that's the case, then I could say that about people from New York, like, oh, well, he just sells drugs. So if he's a drug dealer and they're all drug dealers, like you're stereotyping people that you don't even know. You haven't given a dude a chance. You know what I'm saying? Seems like he likes poetry and a lot of other things that maybe some Chicago dudes don't like. I don't really know. But the fact that they are stereotyping this young guy because he's from Chicago really, really sucks on their part because as an adult, you should want to give people a chance and set a good example for your daughter. They're screaming at her. Your mom is screaming at her, taking shit from her. Like, okay, first of all, you've grown and yet and still you still live in your parents' household. Um, which means, you know, that you're under their roof and a lot of times you got to respect what they say, but you're still grown. Now, your brother, who's the motherfucking snitch, he need to go back to McDonald's and flip them burgers and make the motherfucking fries, okay? And mind his goddamn business, all right? He just mad because his life ain't shit, and he want to snitch on you so that the finger could be pointed at your ass. What stress is your brother under? Like, I'm saying, you live at home, you don't pay rent, you don't pay your phone bill, your parents are paying for everything, and you're under stress? 
I'm sorry, but if I was grown and I was living at home and I didn't have to pay no rent and all my money went to my clothes and food for me and do what I want to do, I'm not going to be stressed about a motherfucking thing, okay? I'm going to continue to flip the motherfucking burgers at McDonald's and do me. There's no stress. There's no stress. The problem is with the parents. It sucks that they have to act like a bunch of fucking asinine children because that's what the fuck they act like. So you up here stereotyping people because they're from Chicago. That's so fucked up because if her parents are from Chicago or are not from Chicago, they would not like it one bit if her if they were stereotyped. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, we from we from Hawaii, so you know what I'm saying? We just going to stereotype their ass. We're going to talk shit about them. That's You don't do shit like that. People in each state do the same type of crimes. We got motherfucking drug dealers in New York, Arizona, Chicago, Detroit, motherfucking Washington, Seattle, California, Maryland, Baltimore, LA, Atlanta. We got drug dealers in each state, okay? We got motherfucking dudes that want to hit it and quit it in each state. Just because you're from Chicago don't mean that you are the only state that want to hit it and quit it, okay? There are niggas in Arizona. There are niggas in New York. There are niggas in Detroit. There are niggas in Washington. Fucking Paris, London, whatever the fuck you want to do, call it. There are niggas that do that shit all around the world wide. So don't just stereotype a man from fucking Chicago without giving him a chance. You know what I'm saying? So here it is. This young lady and found her somebody that she really is digging on. She like him. He's sending her poetry. He drove 45 minutes and put a love note on her windshield. Like, who the fuck does that? I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? That's like some real romance shit. Because if he really wanted to hit it, he wasn't going to drive 45 minutes just to live a, leave a letter there. I mean, maybe he would. I don't know. You know, everybody's agenda is totally different than what I may feel. However, I feel like your, your parents are acting really, really immature. Okay? And your mom is just taking advantage of the situation to the utmost. Now she's going through your things and she's, she's taking your things and she's throwing them out. That's disrespectful. Okay? You don't do that to people. First of all, you pay rent. Okay, you pay fucking rent to live there. So therefore, she cannot go through your things and throw them in the motherfucking garbage. You are a tenant. Okay, that's typically what they consider you to be a motherfucking tenant. Now, you can either do one move out. However, if you move out, you say you've heard that they will take your financial aid. And you might not be able to afford it. Now, first of all, what I would do is I would first find out if they're going to take my financial aid if I move out. I've never heard of anything like if I move out of my parents' home, I'm going to be stripped of my financial aid. I've never heard of that. I would think that, you know, it's um, you probably get a little bit more because now your parents' income is not being counted and you have to live on your own. So I would think that you probably would get a little bit more help. For two, if you cannot afford to live on your own, sweetheart, what you need to do is... Find out which one of your friends would like to move out as well. And maybe you guys can find an apartment where you guys can split it together and share the rent and the cost of living. Point blank, period. Like, I know sometimes as younger adults, we get, you know, overwhelmed with the responsibilities of living at home with our parents because we have rules. I have rules too. Just because my daughter is 21 and she pays me rent and my son was, he's 19, he pays me rent, doesn't mean that they could do whatever the fuck they want in house, my house, excuse me. Meaning you can't bring up no no guy and no girl up in here and think that they're going to spend the fucking night over. You can't smoke weed up in here. You can't get drunk up in here. I have rules, okay? Because in, we got motherfucking rules. But I always say, if you don't motherfucking like it to my kids, then you can move the fuck out. I always tell them that. And like the same thing goes for you. Like, I know that you want to be at home, but sometimes we have to grow up and we got to, we got to suck in that gut and we got to, we got to wear our weight on our shoulder and we got to be in the adult and do the adult thing. Now, don't move out because you want to have a relationship with this dude. Move out because you want to be the mature adult and you want privacy in your life and you want to be the mature adult once again, okay? If you feel like the situation is overbearing at your house, then sometimes we have to walk away from the situation. Just like I said to Trina, sometimes we got to walk away from the situation. I honestly thought that this was a love story, but it ended up being a parent acting the fuck up again. And it just, it's like, okay, listen, you're her mother. That's your mother. She's not even being motherly because 
me as a parent and a mother and I have daughters, I would really want them to be able to come and talk to me if they felt the need to or if something was bothering them. However, your mother is acting like an asinine and the way she's acting, you wouldn't even want to fucking look at her or blink twice, let alone have a conversation with her about something that's bothering you. She's acting totally immature and so is your father. And if you, Tiffany, don't know the real reason of why they don't like men from Chicago, if you do not know this, I would highly suggest that you ask them, what is your beef with men from Chicago? Okay. And even if you do know the reason, I'm guaranteeing you that you probably don't know the real reason because if they fucking spewed it and yelled at you about the guys from Chicago, you probably definitely don't know the whole entire reason. So me personally, I would definitely want to sit down and ask my parents in a calm voice, what is what what is it that you don't like about men from Chicago? Can you please explain this to me? Because I need to know. Because he's nothing like that. You need to explain this to them. You need to find out their side of the story. You know, I mean, me personally, I probably would just I probably would have went off, but that's not the cool thing to do either because it's not gonna make any matters better. It's just gonna make them worse. But I definitely would find out like What's the issue with men in Chicago? Like, I don't know. Do people know? Like, do you guys know? Like, should you not date somebody from Chicago? Like, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not dating anybody from anywhere except for New York. You know what I'm saying? But, um, and that's my husband. So I don't like, I've never heard of anything bad about people from Chicago or guys from Chicago, but, um, apparently there's something going on because Tiffany's parents do not like them. And they got the news that he was from Chicago and just fucking blew the fuck up, okay? Let me know because, look, I don't want to be one of those parents that be like, you can't date anybody from Chicago. I would never want to do that. But I give everybody a chance. And it seems like your parents have not been giving anybody from Chicago a fucking chance. Like, this is a hard one. I just mean, you know, communication is always the key to every fucking thing. Like, on some real shit, like, you got to communicate with your parents. You got to communicate with your friends and family. Like, you know, they not communicating at all with you. They just fucking screaming obscenities and fucking snatching shit and throwing out the motherfucking door and slapping you. Like, the fucking slap thing on the face was enough. Like, that was total disrespect. You don't hit people in the face. You don't hit your children just because they're your fucking children. You don't do shit like that, okay? That was disrespectful because what if your reflexes was the fuck up and you reflexed and hit her ass the fuck back? Then you be in the wrong because they would definitely say that you were in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? So that for one, I would definitely like, listen here, mom. We're going to have to have a conversation because for one, I don't like being slapped. Like that shit was dead ass wrong. That's abuse. You don't do shit like that to your kids. From that, I probably would have definitely moved out. I probably would have definitely moved out because you ain't about to be fucking punking me. And I'm 21 years old and I live here and I pay fucking rent and groceries. Man, listen, you're not about to be fucking punking me. Not today. Not motherfucking today. I'm going to have to move the fuck out. Okay. I'm going to have to move the fuck out and I'm going to have to deal with this on my own because I ain't about to be slapped around and you taking my shit and throwing it the fuck out and snatching shit from me and throwing it at me like, girl, maybe you should just fucking move out like on some real shit. Maybe you fucking should. But before you do, find out why the fuck she don't like people from Chicago or men from Chicago. Please tell me because I'm so lost. Like, I'm lost. Seriously, lost with this one. Are, like, are they bad? Like, she said hit it and quit it. Like, I don't know. Hmm. So anyway, you guys. Yes, I just said I was only going to do two real talks today because, you know, I had a lot of shit going on. And I just kind of want to make them so long, you know what I'm saying? Just because, I don't know. I don't want to bore you guys too much. So I'm trying to like, I, I know I was doing three at a time. First I was only doing one, then I started doing two, then I started doing three. And that was basically to catch up. And now it seems like I'm all caught up. So I'm just going to be doing two real talks because I don't want to be long winded. You know what I'm saying? I hate to be fucking long winded. And I am long winded. But I'm going to go. I'm going to get these wig videos done. She pop in. And I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Leave your advice for the two young ladies below. Tiffany and Trina. Tiffany and Trina. Tiffany and Trina. Below about their situations with family. Because this is all got to do with motherfucking family. 
And on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, and I will see you guys in a soon come video. Uh -huh. What? Yeah. Real trap shit.